Buenos días. Right. Another video for you. First of all, thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to my channel. And I'm going to keep this video short. When people, when people don't, when people can't escape, they escalate. This comes for worldly people. When worldly people can't escape, they escalate. There is another phrase in the English language that has become popular, and it goes like this. When people have nothing left to lose, they lose it. Now, I rephrase that message differently. When worldly people can't escape, they escalate. Just think about it. When you are in a situation that's very stressful, and let's say that someone comes with a knife at you, you flee. You don't want to be there, or some points a gun at you. You flee, right? That's a logical thing to do. But if someone comes after you and you can't escape, you have to do something to remain alive. So you you do so at that moment, you, man, you lose it because you need to do something to remain alive. So you may attack the attacker, or if you see a chair over there, you throw it. You do what you do to survive. Okay, that happens in extreme circumstances. But what I'm talking about is not extreme circumstances, because you need to understand this. There are people out there who are not interested in what's real and what's not real. They're only interested in their own expectations. So when their expectations are frustrated to them, it is at, as if they are, as if their life is being threatened. Even though there is some threat to their life, to their bodily health, but it's all about their expectations to them. So, for example, you can have that you go to the supermarket often, but after a while, you don't go there anymore because you know that some people look weird at you. What has happened? There were people talking about your back, talking bad stuff, and those other people believed it. Now, what happens now? They're now upset. Well, they're upset because how they relate to you, based upon information heard about you. But did they evaluate that information? Did they check it out? No. So now they're upset. Why they're upset? Because of their own expectation, because of their own attitude. Are they facing their own attitude? No. They want relief from it. So they want to escape the negative tension that they're in because of their own attitude. And so now they hear the bad stuff about you, so they decide to take it for, for granted and blame you. But let's say now that you think, well, I mean, I always come to the supermarket. The owner of the supermarket is on good terms with me. I'm not going to stop coming to the supermarket because people just have a will. I'm not taking that. What happens now is that you're off at the supermarket. Now, people are triggered when they see you at the supermarket. But whose fault is it they're triggered? They, it's theirs, not yours. Because you think, I'm not going to limit myself and put a, a load on me because they choose to feel happy towards me. What? You're not doing that. Now, what's going to happen? Every time we see you, they are triggered. Instead of seeking help, seeking deliverance, they hold on and they blame you. And that heavy, heaviness is affecting them. They take with them at home, wherever our happiness is. That happiness comes to cause malfunction. Whether it's in their marriage or whether it's at a job. And when they begin to malfunction, now they have to deal with that too. But are they going to give up? No. So one day, you may have some of them that try may try to look for a fight with you because he needs to unload that happiness. But let's say that doesn't work and now he's at home. He can't escape. So what happens now? He, he or maybe she escalates. So he or she, if they have children, they may go off at the children and throw objects and get out of hand. Or, if, or maybe they do it towards your spouse. What, what has happened? They can't escape. That's why they escalate. That is why in the world people often appease um, narcissists. Why? Because when such people cannot escape, and be re but they can't temporarily be relieved 
from facing their own negative will. They may behave and comply with society, but there comes a time that they explode, that they are triggered and best stuff happens, and nobody wants best stuff to happen. And it's important to know this. Why? Because it can work in your advantage. This is one of the reasons why Christ told his disciples to shake the dust off your feet and to move, keep, keep going forward. Christ did not say that because he approved the will of people that rejected his disciples. He didn't. Neither did he give them the right to will whatever they wanted. No. He told them to sh shake the dust off their feet and to move on because the disciples do not deserve to put up with the danger those people are holding on to. Why was people to hold on to the negative, to willing whatever they will, people that hold on to aversive attachments? I made a video about us aversive, aversive attachments. Look, look at it. People that hold on to aversive attachments, they don't have to be narcissists, okay? But narcissists are always in aversive attachments, but people hold on to aversive attachments. There comes a point that you can't escape that anymore, and they're triggered, and either internally they escalate, they become sick, and they get diseases, and that's going to affect community also, or they are triggered, and they may not immediately attack someone, but well, best stuff will happen over time. Some of you have known such people. So, when you shake the dust off your feet and keep moving, it's not you giving in and letting them win. Because their victory of getting rid of you is not a victory at all. They're defeating themselves. What the Most High is telling you to do is to allow them to so-called win so that you will win by being delivered from them. When the people at Gadara begged Christ to leave their territory, Christ could have dealt with them. He could. And some people said, some people said he should have done so. But Christ did what was best. He left him some for us. That man that was demon-possessed, that, that, that the legion of demons, he was delivered. He was at his right mind. And that man who saw how they treated Christ said, Lord, I want to follow you. Christ said, no, go to your relatives and, and tell them what God has done for you in his mercy. The man did it. But did the man remain in that town? No, he moved on because he followed Christ's example. When the people began to um, negotiate with Christ to leave them in their unrest, that's what they were doing. It's quite insane. Christ realized, I don't want to get involved with this. He moved, shook dust off his feet and he moved on. Why? Because when world people can't escape, they escalate. That is why left-wing politicians are so permissible. And a lot of conservative Christians, I mean, Christians hold on to a conservative world view. I don't really go, I'm not going into that right now. They tend to go off at the left. But those people at the left, they have some understanding of how their worldly people operate. They know that when people escalate, there's danger. And you don't want many people to escalate because you can't manage that. So that is why they're so permissible. No, I'm not going to say whether that is right or not. I'm not going into that political debate, but just understand this. They use practical knowledge. And I want you as a believer to use practical knowledge also, especially practical knowledge that Christ has given directly onto you. Well, that's it for now. Agree with Christ. I'm going to listen on Spanish songs. Be at peace. <laughs>